What's going on, everybody? I want to welcome you back to Nick's Deli. I'm your host. I am the owner of Nick's Deli. I'm the proprietor of Nick's Deli. And I want to welcome you here today. We got a lot to catch up on. This isn't your typical Nick's Deli after the victory. We will be going through the bacon, egg, and cheese, the dollar slice, the chopped cheese. But we're going to look at it from a week recap because there were some days that I missed. So we're going to get into it. If you're here for the first time, I want to thank you for joining me. Do me a favor. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Even share this thing. We were aiming to be one of the biggest channels on YouTube. Okay? So I want to thank you for rocking with me. Hope you enjoy yourself. If you're returning to the channel, my KD community, welcome back. You already know what it is. I want to thank you for rocking with me. I want to thank you for supporting this channel, helping me build this thing up. But let's get into it. So, if you're here for the first time, let me just explain what Nick's Deli is. Nick's Deli is the staple of New York. A deli is a staple in New York. But here in Nick's Deli, there are four items on the menu. All right? First item on the menu is the bacon, egg, and cheese. Okay? The bacon, egg, and cheese has those three elements to the sandwich that make that thing phenomenal. So we're going to look at who was the three players this week who stood out to make this week successful and phenomenal. So we're going to take a look at the bacon, egg, and cheese of the week. Next, we're going to look at who was the dollar slice. Everybody knows New York has the best pizza in the world. And the dollar slice is a staple, a stabilizing factor of New York. So we're going to talk about who was the dollar slice this week for here at Nick's Deli. Mm. Then we're going to look at the chopped cheese. Now, the chopped cheese is relatively new to that New York menu, but that thing be bussing. So we're going to look at who is relatively new, who kind of stood out, maybe for contributing to the game and helping us get these victories. But we're going to take a look at who that is and we're going to award that appropriately. And lastly, you can't have the chopped cheese, the dollar slice. You can't have the bacon and cheese unless you got something to wash that thing down with. And here in Nick's Deli, we call that the quarter water. So we're going to look at who's the quarter water of the week. Who contributed maybe in spurts, but really helped us get over the top and help us secure this successful week. And then we got two more items on the menu. One item on the menu we recently added this season, and it's called the glizzy of the game. Hey, yo. Okay, Lucy the game will go to somebody, whether it's on the team, surrounding the team, or in the media, that says something that's a little bit out of pocket. They may be talking a little bit too much, and you don't want to be outright rude and just tell them to STF you, okay? You may want to find a different way to shut them up. Now, what better way to shut them up than giving them the glizzy of the game? So we're going to award the glizzy of the game to somebody. And then lastly, we have our nah, son, nah, you wildin' moment of the game. Nah, son, nah. You, you wildin'. And that's when we look at a situation, whether it's surrounding a team in the NBA, wherever, that makes you look at the camera sideways and say, nah, son, nah. You wildin'. And then we're going to wrap it up with my parting thoughts. So I want to thank you for joining me. Let's dive right in. Who gets the bacon of the bacon, egg, and cheese? And of course, you already know who gets the bacon of the bacon, egg, and cheese. We talking about the Brundertaker. We talking about Jay Hover. We talking about our point guard, all NBA, all star, all world MVP of the team. We talking about Jalen mother flipping Brunson. Listen, without Jalen Brunson, we were, look, we were looking torn and tattered, out of sorts, okay? But our guy returned this week. And in the nick of time, shout out to, to, to Clyde Frazier. In the nick of time, our guy returned for the games against Houston and Washington. Back to backs, absolutely needed. And we still understand he's not fully healed, but once again, he was healed up enough to tough through and help us secure these two victories, all right? Jalen Brunson is a problem. The man came back against Houston right off an of injury, fresh off an of injury. What does he do? The man comes in, he drops 30 points, seven assists, okay? Once again, this dude is the MVP of our team, and he is separating himself in a point guard conversation in terms of the Eastern Conference. You have to recognize this man's contributions and his impact, not only on our team, but on this league. Moving far and far away quickly from that label of having been a backup player, a sidekick to Luka Doncic. The man is a bona fide superstar. The only thing that he is missing is the opportunity in winning situations to display that in the playoffs and that time is coming. But once again, we back to this Houston game. They had no answer for him. 30 points, seven assists. 
in that game. And against Washington, the man followed that up on a back-to-back -back and dropped 41 of them things. 41 of them things on the Washington Bullets. Okay, shot down. Okay, Washington Wizards. Bullets were their former name. But 41 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists. Isn't it interesting that the level of assist that this man has dropped since the trade directly coincides with the improved efficiency from that corner three. The moment he is able to drive in and break the defense down and then kick that thing out to the corner and the person makes the shot is a complete, complete, complete game changer to this man's assist, um, uh, assist numbers. Nick fans, study the game. Study the game because you were crucifying this man for his lack of assists and not even thinking about the fact that people aren't making the shots when he dimes them up. You got to be able to close, you have to be able to close, make the shot. If somebody penetrates the lane, get in, and dishes it off to you so you have the open shot, you got to knock that thing down. We're going to get into Obi Anunobi, but he has been a difference maker when Julius, when, um, when JB drives the lane and kicks that thing out and his ability to knock down those shots. So this man's assist numbers have improved dramatically with the addition to that to our team. Once again, I think we just look flaky without him, you know, and, and it shows also the value of just a strong backup point guard. And I think Deuce's improvement is, is going to be, you know, um, impactful for our team. The quicker that he can kind of get accustomed to that new role, <clears throat> think about his game and how he could, uh, you know, really make his name coming off the bench and backing up in the point guard uh, role. Faster he can get there, uh, we'll be better off. Because without JB, you know, we've had moments where we look flaky, we've looked disorganized. And it was clear that 35% of Julius Randle's power comes from Jalen Brunson because he really looked lost without JB on the floor with him. You know, uh, it looked like he was hesitant to step in and take over. And I told people, I'm like, you know, he's damned if he does and he's damned if he don't. Damned if he does and damned if he don't, because if he does and he turns the ball over, they were saying he's doing too much, he's being selfish. And if, we, if he doesn't, we're saying he's not being um, uh, assertive enough. You know, so Julius is almost in a lose-lose situation when it comes to that as well. But what is clear is that JB is 35% of his power when he's on the floor. Without him, it's like having kryptonite out there. And lastly, I just want to shout out to Jalen Brunson, man, just being a finisher, bro. You know, he is clearly a finisher. Anybody who has questions about Jalen Brunson, when they begin to watch the Knicks, and that's increasing now. Because with every win that we accumulate, more and more people are forced to pay attention to the game in full before they could catch highlights and then try to make commentary on who the Knicks are and what the Knicks are doing and what we don't have and what we're not doing based on the highlights. Now, with our record improving, with the numbers that JB and Julius are putting up and with the teams that we're beating, they're forced to now closely examine who we are, what we do and how we play and then be able to speak on it. And now when they're doing so, now we're in the conversations about, oh, we have contender. or oh, we one piece away from being championship contender. Oh, oh, we were there before. Now you're starting to talk about it because of all of those things. Uh, and JB is the key to that, you know? Uh, so I just, wanna, I just wanna give a shout out to our point guard. Jalen Brooks, a round of applause for that man. The bacon of the bacon and the cheese. Who's the egg of the bacon, egg, and cheese? The egg of the bacon, egg, and cheese is Julius Mother Flippin' Randall. Round of applause for the second dog on our squad, Julius Randall. We can say what we will about Julius. Fan base is not as divided as they were previously. I think Julius really has earned his stripes since being here. He is now part of our fabric. If any monumental move is, is made, this man is going to get the largest round of applause when he comes to the garden because he has been through the fire. He has been through the flame. He has been forged by the heat 
of Madison Square Garden and the spotlight that has shone upon him. He's been burned repeatedly. The man is a New Yorker. The man is an absolute New Yorker. And you better worry about being nice. You better be nice to Julius because I'm telling you that kid he has, Caden, you don't be nice to him, he's gonna come back. He's gonna punish us for like 33 years straight. He'll probably be the best team in the league. He's gonna be the new Giannis when he gets drafted going to get drafted high and he's going to have a target on the New York Knicks fan base because of the way we treated his father. <laughs> so be, be mindful how you treat Julius because Caden, it looks like he's going to be a problem. He's going to look, he's going to be a beast. But Julius, once again, man, part of our dynamic duo, uh, look, dropped 31 points against Houston Rockets, you know, and you know, 30 and 30, man. The dynamic dude wants me together. We got the best combo in the league, bro. We get we got the best combo in the league. And we need to recognize that. That's why I was telling people for the last two years, let's not wait. Let's not wait for the NBA and then ESPN and all those people to label our guy, JB, a superstar. And at this point now, Julius Randle, let's not wait to kind of put him up there as a superstar. Who else is... Look, a lot of the retirements have happened. Uh, Carmelo Anthony retired. If Carmelo was considered a superstar in this league, Julius, if we make the conference finals, you better put his name as a superstar. You, you better put his name as a superstar. Brunson is clearly a superstar. He's already been to the conference finals in the West. Already been. And, by, and, and that stat, status that he had at that point is equivalent to the status that Carmelo had because Carmelo was a puppy and he got to the conference finals. So if y'all looked at Carmelo Anthony as a superstar, then, Ju, then, then Jalen Brown is a superstar. And Julius is on the heels of it because Julius has accomplished a lot. All NBA, multiple time All-Star. Come on now. Most improved player of the league. He's, he got hardware from the league. He's one of the leaders in scoring in terms of the New York Knicks organization. This is where we are. And Julius is a problem. And he's consistently a problem. He's consistently a problem. So one thing I absolutely love to hear, I know recently he, in the post-game conversation, he talked about how defenses load up on him less. Pause. Defenses load up on him less as a result of uh, Jalen Brown, I'm sorry, Jalen Brunson being on the team. That is crucial. That is crucial. And it's a difference maker. It's even more so, not only with Jalen Brunson on the team, but when you have people who can hit the outside shot, when you have a D. Vincenzo, when you have an OG Anunobi who can hit the three point shot. Listen, man, those are our young boys. I love RJ, I love IQ. But when you got people who hit that outside shot consistently when you, you know, kick the ball out to them, especially in the starting lineup. You got OG and DiVincenzo in the starting lineup who hit the outside shot when it passes. Julius is now seeing the fact that they can't double him no more because if he kicks it out and finds the right one, he's going to knock down the shot. Now, what are you going to do? Now you got to play off of them. And you got to be mindful of who the ball is going to go to next because they're knocked down the shot. They didn't have to worry about that with RJ. We were offended when Anthony Edwards said it, but Anthony Edwards said it. We want him taking that final shot. Oh, yeah, yeah. We wanted to make sure nobody else got the ball. We wanted to make sure RJ took that final shot. RJ was just like, I'm going to keep taking that shot. Listen, no. You're not consistent. And people will look at it and be like, well, listen, look at it, Toronto, listen. All right, we'll see. We'll see. But I'm not paying attention to what's happening at Toronto. I'm talking about what happened in New York and the difference that Julius Randle is seeing and his ability to consistently put up those type of numbers and the fact that he has that freedom and flexibility on the floor now to move is as a direct result of OG being camped outside, DiVincenzo being camped outside, and their ability to be efficient from that area. So it's it's a wonderful thing to see, and it's a wonderful thing for uh, for Julius to recognize and be able to put out there. So shout out to our egg of the bacon, egg, and cheese today. 
uh, our bulldog, our dog, man, our, our star, all NBA, Julius Randle. Round of applause for Julius Randle. Now the cheese of the bacon, egg, and cheese today goes to our guy, the Da Vinci Code. We're going to give a shout out to Dante DiVincenzo. Round of applause for Dante DiVincenzo. Yeah, man, everything I just talked about. I don't really want to dive into specific stats because with Dante, it's not about the specific stats. It's about the little things he does within the game, knocking down three-pointers at the right time. We can't, we can't talk about that enough. We went from last year being one of the most suspect three-point shooting teams, not knowing when that's going to happen the year before, being outright terrible in three-point shooting. Outright terrible. The year before that, we had a nice little run with threes, but people was calling it fool school. People was calling it an apparition. But now we have a reliable three-point shooter in the starting lineup. From anywhere. Quick release. Dante has been a game changer for us. And it also makes you, you know, it makes you wonder what our offense will look like, whether or not we will be tampering with the chemistry. If we do as a lot of people are speculating about, if we make a trade and he moves out of the starting lineup. Yes, we will have that coming off of the bench, but it just seems to be flowing and it seems to be directly impacting our stars ability to really put up monster points when you have that in the starting lineup. So let's give a shout out and a round of applause for our guy, Dante DiVincenzo, the last component of the Big and Egg and Cheese here in Nick's Deli, baby. Now, who is the dollar slice? Who has been that stabilizing factor, that, that consistent factor here this week here at Nick's Deli? And of course, it has to go to our guy, the Red Bull, Isaiah Hartenstein. Shout out and round of applause for our guy, Isaiah Hartenstein. Yeah, Isaiah, man, once again, bro, where would we be without Isaiah Hartenstein? Where would we be? We would be up Ish Creek. That's where we would be. Isaiah Hartenstein has been a godsend with our guy Mitch going now. Shout out to you, Mitch. If you watch, give you a shout out, man. Our our wishes of, of healing, fast healing. We talking like Wolverine style fast healing to you. We can't wait for you to get back. But your boy has been stepping up. And stepping on these fat these these cats you've been stepping on these cats so we thank isaiah hartenstein for really being able to step in and take on uh the burden of of being the big man in the middle for um for the new york knicks and once again delivers man against houston he had 11 rebounds against washington he has 17 rebounds and not only that the man is dropping dimes on everybody the man is dropping more dimes than american gangster Okay, like five assists, three assists. You know, he's adding steals to that. He's adding blocks to that. He's doing everything, everything to the point that people who are really watching these games are really questioning if he's the the best fit in that in that role. You know what I mean? As a starter. And my thing is, don't question if he's the best fit in that role, whether he's starting on the bench. Just be happy that he's on our team because the man is going to command the bag. He's going to command the bag. But Isaiah Hartenstein has done more than enough. He's done more than his job. He's, he's really, with his style of play, if he remains healthy, he is going to make us a competitor through these playoffs. A legit comp competitor against any team on any night in these playoffs. No matter how big or small. You see how he performed against Gobert. You see how he performed against Embiid. The man is a dog. He is a dog. He's a fighter. And you don't really develop that unless you are battling in practice. When you have talent up and down the roster, you don't be so quick to kind of get rid of it. Steel is sharpening steel, which is why they're so close because they're battling each other, which makes everybody else outside of that barbecue chicken. So shout out to our dollar slice of the week. Our guy, Red Bull, Isaiah Hartenstein. Round of applause for this man. <laughs> Next up on the menu here in Mitch Deli is our chopped cheese. Okay, who is the re who's relatively new?
but that thing be busting. Whose contribution this week? Relatively new. We don't really, we don't really, really see it, but that thing be busting. And it only, in terms of relatively new, new, it only insinuates his newness to the team. Our our guy is OG Anunobi. Round of applause for OG Anunobi. Chop cheese this week. Once again, we'll be talking about OG Anunobi here on the New York Knicks. We're talking about efficiency. When we're talking about OG Anunobi here on the Knicks, we're talking about his defensive impact, presence, and fingerprint on the game. When we're talking about OG Anunobi, we're talking about uh, Corner 3 OG. Shout out to Corner 3 OG Anunobi. When we're talking about OG Anunobi, we're talking about his plus minus every game. Historic pace. When we're talking about OG Anunobi, we're talking about the fact that we are perceived differently now in the media. We are perceived differently now across the NBA because of his addition to our starting lineup. It's not about points. And a lot of people were trying to plant the seeds of dissension in this garden, hoping that it will grow. And it's not. Those seeds of dissension, they, they were saying, well, New York, oh, you know, OG was looking for a larger role. OG was looking for a larger role in the offense. And shout out, I was listening to uh, KFTV. Shout out to KFTV as well. I was listening to one of the uh, people on Discord. He mentioned, you wanted a larger role. You don't get no larger role than 43 minutes. <laughs> Tom Thibodeau don't be playing no games. Tom Thibodeau don't be playing zero games. But also, they used to call that former coach, Nick Nurse, his coach in Toronto, the Tom Thibodeau of the North. No lie. Go look it up. They used to call him Tom Thibodeau of the North. And when you ask OG about the minutes, whether it's 38 minutes or 43 minutes, he said, I do this regularly. That doesn't impact me. It doesn't impact me. And I got news for you, Nick fans. We talk about, oh, you know, whether it's Tom Thibodeau playing too many minutes. That is a conversation on probably 40 to 50 percent on other teams as well. Come on now. We're now reaching for things to criticize this team. This team is doing well. This team is a winning basketball team. And sometimes we don't allow ourselves. We look for the perfection. We don't have the big three of Miami Heat that season. And even the big three of that season, the Miami Heat that season, they had one, like one or two players coming off the bench. And they were playing heavy minutes because their big three were, and they were blowing people out. You don't worry about that when you win a championship and you're on the path of winning the championship and you're winning. Okay? But that was the critic that was the criticism, that was the critique everybody had about that team. So when you talk about minutes, you know. Listen, I, I, I guess it's subjective, all right? But enjoy the fact that we are established as a culture. We're established as having an identity. We're established as being winners in this NBA. We are next up. When you look at the players, who are the major players in terms of teams who can throw their name in a hat and say this team is a possible contender? between contenders and pretenders. No no middle category, no gray area. The New York Knicks are on the side of contenders in this today's NBA. So understand and appreci appreciate that, okay? But our dollar slice is a main reason for that. So shout out to Isaiah Hartenstein. I know we have to chop cheese. So OG Ananobi, man, once again, his impact aren't gonna be always reflected in numbers. But it's all over the place, man. He had 15 points, five rebounds, four assists, one block in 43 minutes against Houston, against Washington. Had a huge third quarter that propelled us in a game where we were playing down to our competition. But he stepped up and propelled us in that quarter and ended to a tune of 19 points and seven rebounds. Let's give a round of applause for a player I truly appreciate having as a result of that trade, the chopped cheese of the game, our guy, Corner 3 OG, OG Anunobi. Round of applause for OG Anunobi. Now, you know you can't have the chopped cheese. You can't have the dollar slice. God, you can't have the big and egg and cheese if you ain't got nothing to wash that thing down with. Here in Nick's Deli, we call that the quarter water. Quarter water of the game goes to our guy, Josh Hart. Round of applause 
for Josh Hart here at Nick's Deli today. Nick's Deli Edition. Now, y'all been bugging. If I'm going to be honest, y'all been bugging. We watch these games, yes. You know, we, we react to these games, yes. But in terms of the big picture, remind yourself that there is a big picture. Because we, when I'm looking at Twitter or I'm listening to YouTube and people's channels and everybody is looking at game to game, whether or not somebody is valuable enough to, to remain on the team or be traded based on certain game by game performances. You don't look at the larger picture. You don't look at the fact that we've been a winning team since Josh Hart arrived at the New York Knicks. You don't look at the fact that the little things that he does disrupting, you know, having your hands in a lane and 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 rebounding his behind off. And then now with recent news, realizing that the man has been playing through knee sore soreness all season. Now, he talked about this being a regular type of thing, and it usually happens shortly before the All-Star break, and he has a chance to take that break and then recover, and he's good to go for the remainder of the season. But something else that is possibly unusual for him is the fact that last year played into the playoffs. You know, uh, over the summer played, you know, uh, FIBA basketball. And then coming into this year and, and with our injuries and, and things of that sort, playing a little bit of a bigger role as well. So those things factor in to the amount of miles that are added to the man's knees but still being able to fight through it. But still, once again, this whole generation of players are very mindful of social media. So you know he hears the chatter, you know he reads the headlines, you know he watches the videos and the content. And he's impacted by that. You know, so, uh, you know, my quarter water is Josh Hart, man. We will not, Josh, we need a player like Josh Hart on the team. Every championship team does. And I said it the moment we traded for him. He will be our Draymond Green. He will be our Draymond Green. Draymond was highly criticized for who are you and what do you do until they started winning championships. And now this man with his whack numbers is going to be a Hall of Famer along with the other two, Clay Thompson and, and, Steve, and, and uh, Steph Curry. So... Nick fans, we are so quick from game to game to crucify players. When we have a player such as Josh Hart who's done nothing else but impact winning on our team for us. So I, want, I just want to take this opportunity to give a shout out to our guy, um, <laughs> Josh Motherflipper Hart. Round of applause. Put your hands together. Round of applause for our guy, Josh Hart. And as we come up on the last item that's on the menu, before I get into the nah son nah moment of the day and then close this thing out with my parting thoughts, I just want to give a shout out to the Boston Celtics. Yeah, yeah I know, I know I'm wild, I know I'm wild. Nah, son, nah. You hear me out, hear me out though. Not literally the team, but uh, Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce and their little podcast that they have, you know. It's always funny. I know part of it now they're starting to learn the drama uh, angle to social media and what gets views and what gets clicks. They're starting to understand that the New York Knicks topic is a heavy topic that draws eyes and gets clicks from them. But I also, but what you can't hide is whether or not they have an affinity or disgust for our organization. And what you start to see now is Kevin Garnett, whether it's speaking about the New York Knicks or any other team, but I think it's just this generation. Kevin Garnett is a defender of like the new age, the new era, the new generation. Uh, he's one of those people you could kind of tell, although he's our age, you know, he still dresses young, you know what I mean? Keeps himself in great shape. He, he identifies and he, he looks to identify with the younger demographic and to make sure that, comp that, that connection is kept. Paul Pierce on the other side represents the generation of get off our lawn. You know, I want to keep these ops here. You know, I, want, I and no matter how good you do or how well you think you are positioned, 
I want to remind you that you still are reachable from the bottom. So he's going to take every opportunity to bring you down. But we had this little clip, this little exchange where I, I guess I don't have full context, but I guess the conversation surrounded in this new NBA. Who are dogs? What dogs are there in this new NBA? There are no dogs. And I'm assuming that was the perspective of Paul Pierce. And because K KG was so animated, like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Like, there are dogs. And he gave us a shout out. He, he was like, Julius Randle dog and then Paul Pierce was just like yeah yeah all right he's a dog and that's first and foremost fans all right we think we matter we don't matter as much to these players as we think we do but when you have your peers and when you have Hall of Fame level peers stamping you with yeah he a dog can't he a dog that's big that's big so Nick fans, don't wait too late to give your own players flowers. That's big. They stamped Julius in that moment. One of the best power forwards and small forwards in the history of the game recognized Julius Randle as one of them. Well, you know, in terms of being a dog. Okay. And then Jalen Brunson. All right. Now KG was like Jalen Brunson, but Paul Pierce is still holding back, trying to stamp Jalen Brunson. And I don't know what that is about. I don't know what that is about. It could be, you know, the Kansas, because I believe Paul Pierce played for Kansas and Villanova. It could be the Kansas Villanova. I don't think it is because they're two age brackets. But whatever reason is, Paul Pierce is hesitating to give, um, you know, Jalen Brunson his flowers. But the reason these two get the glizzy of the game it's just KG, man. I could see why Carmelo and KG was going to fight. I could hear, the, I, could, I could understand why, you know, the comment made, you know, where KG allegedly told Carmelo that he was with his wife and she tastes like Honey Nut Cheerios. Like, who, like who, says that? <laughs> who says that? And then even in this exchange, there was a moment where KG made a comment. And he said, who says that? You know, because they were saying something like, you know, I think he said, well, look at the video. Well, name some pit bulls. Randall will bone your ass right, right now, all right, nigga. Dog. Or dog. Randall, all right, cool. Brunson will bone your ass right now. Now, who says that? Who sa I'm sitting there like, I'm, I'm agreeing and I'm happy that he's bigging up the Knicks, but at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, I'm like, hey, yo. Nah, son, nah. You wild. So, KG, although I support you, you know, for this, I'm going to give both you you as well as Paul Pierce the glizzy of the game. Do me a favor. For all that bone talk, <laughs> chill, bro. Chill. Nah, son, nah. You wildin'. And who really gets the nah, son, nah, you wildin' moment of the game which is the last item here at Nick's Deli. Do me a favor, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share it on, on X, on Twitter, so I can get these numbers up. We're doing our best to remain consistent. But back to who gets the Nasa and Nah, you wild a moment of the game. The Nasa and Nah, you wild a moment of the game goes to CP the franchise and KFTV. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the Nasa and Nah, you wildin' moment of the game goes to CP and KFTV. Why do you ask? This is why. Shout out to Robert Randolph. All right, so on my way home yesterday, I was, I don't know if it was a replay, I think it was a replay of watching uh, KFTV. And then uh, they got to a segment where they was talking about uh, Robert Randolph. And if you know anything about my channel, uh, I'm, I'm not a big, I'm not a big channel. You know what I mean? But Robert Randolph, comments on, on on my twitter post when i talk about the damn friday night Knicks song and the fact that i hate it and the fact that for me it symbolizes losing in the losing season so every time i hear that jingle i'm triggered friday night yeah yeah i'm sitting there like oh my god we're gonna lose this game to me it represents those orange jerseys and the fact that we do nothing it just symbolizes losing so he commented on it. He was just like, oh, well, you know, I'm a uh, 
uh, award winner, Emmy award winner, or whatever, whatever. And kudos, you know, Robert Randolph is accomplished at what he does. But it's so funny. So that back and forth, I was just like, yo, he's it's, it's corny, he's corny. But uh, I was listening to the segment on Nick Fan TV. <laughs> And CP was just going in. I'm like, yo, CP, why are you going in like that? He was calling him, uh, Sar- what is it, Sergeant Sauces. So, you know, uh, Robert Randolph, if you wa- follow his Twitter as well, shout out to you, Robert Randolph. I know I'm taking shots, but you know it's all love as well. Shout out to you, K- uh, CP as well. But he called him Sergeant Sauces because, you know, he would drop cryptic tweets saying, oh, you know what? Look out for this move that's about to be made. Big move coming down the pike. And sometimes the big moves aren't made. So for him to say Sergeant Sources, I was I was just dying because I was just like, yo, that's appropriate because sometimes we were looking for these big ma- moves that he's going to drop, uh, that he says they're going to drop and they don't drop. But then he posted a photo that was captured of Robert Randolph at the Knicks game uh, in you know, uh, Jim Dolan's seat. And he was kind of just like this. He was like sitting here, but he was kind of not trying to turn his head, but he's looking over at the bench. So, so CP said he looked like the ops. <laughs> CP said he looked like he was wearing a wire. <laughs> he said the man looked like he was an undercover. Look at that, like he was wearing a wire. He had the Knicks journey under the button. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, Alex, uh, tr- try to cast on from try to cast, cast on. He made the comment. He was just. <laughs> it reminded me of the movie Paid in Full, where you had the undercovers walking up to uh, Ace while you were sitting in the car. You just oh, you know, maybe maybe another time. You know what I mean? Really be extra. And I forget what Alex, try to from try to cast on said, but. You know, he referenced, I believe, that movie where he just said the guy who looked like a, a undercover said something just corny that was just out of line. But he, Robert Randolph, did look like that for that moment. So, you know, the Nasa Nah You Wild and moment of the day goes to Nick Fans Nasa, TV. Nah, you wild. Y'all had me rolling, man. Y'all had me rolling. So that's here at Nick's Deli. That's it. Okay. Uh, we have a good game tonight. We're going to make another video talking about our game against Toronto. It's good, maybe not necessarily in terms of record, but the fact that our guys are coming back. Will we celebrate them? Won't we celebrate them? Will we win? Won't we win? We can get into that as well. But my parting thoughts is this. We're at this point of the season where we, we're kind of seeing who we are. We have made a, a significant trade. It seems to be working out for us very well. Um, definitely informs our confidence going into this playoffs. And, and our chances in being able to perform. Um, but once again, we haven't hit the trade deadline. So there's a lot of discussions. There's a lot of names that are out there that are being connected to the New York Knicks. Uh, two of the primary names, one always is Donovan Mitchell and the other is uh, DeJounte Murray, you know, w- uh, with the Atlanta Hawks. Um, some other names that are thrown out there are Denny Avdia. You know, I heard that mentioned. Uh, but all of that, being said, the consistent name and, and player of value that would be included in the, that trade obviously would be um, Quentin Grimes. You know, so when we look at our player, and, and I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Grimes scene stand. You know, Quentin Grimes talked about the Grimes scene. Anytime he puts up shots, he's a shooter. And when they hit, there's an obvious Grimes scene that takes place. Quentin Grimes is one of my, you know, young young guys. And I think the, the, even the Knicks fan base is kind of making reference to, oh, we're getting rid of all of the young guys. Well, listen, that's what you do when you develop players. You're supposed to develop players that other people want. And then when they want them, you make the trade, you get something back of value to position you to take that next step to another level. You know what I mean? So when, you, when you're young and you're a child, you play with childish toys. But as you get older, you put away childish things. And that's the same thing at certain points in time, you got to move forward with what's best for your organization as a company. So with that being said, looking at this game as a business and the moves that we make as a business, there is the human factor. And the fact that these players, not only are they human, but they're young and they're easily impacted. 
And, you know, we can look at and point at the inconsistency with Quentin Grimes um, and maybe his lack of performance and just outright duds for the past few games. Well, you know these young players not only pay attention to um, the news, but they pay attention to the media and, and the social media. They pay attention to the conversations with the fans. They're listening to Woj just like we're listening to Woj. So how can you really lock in and focus on being the best version of who you are when not only every minute that you get, you're, you're, you have that pressure to perform, but you don't know if you're going to be here, you know, in next game. You just seen two of your big bros, you know, shipped out. So I can only imagine what this young man is going through. Uh, but at the end of the day, it is a business. And uh, I, with all that being said, I don't really follow too many of the videos that focus on who should we get, who shouldn't we get. Because at this point, I trust the front office. I trust the front office because the majority of the moves that they made have been spot on. The, the majority of the uh, of the di direction and, and the decisions that they've made surrounding the direction of this team has been spot on. And I'm not accustomed to that. I know anybody younger than me, you people out there aren't accustomed to that. At least I had a sense of it when we had Pat Riley with the team and Dave Checkett or Ernie Grunfeld with that Pat Riley regime. At least then that time there was a steady hand and a, and a vision for where we wanted to go and a formula for success that could be implemented and brought about and was brought about. But in these recent times, this is the closest to competence we've ever seen. So I'm just going to sit back. Y'all been hitting. Y'all been spot on. I completely trust in the front office. Do what you do. And I'm going to ride with whatever decisions you make. So with that being said, um, that's one of my parting thoughts. Bench unit is still trying to find themselves, trying to find their identity, get comfortable. Um, last season before the trade deadline, we struggled as well. Team's going to be picking up, you know, performance and, and production will pick up once people know that they're not going anywhere. Trade deadline, people don't know if they're going to have to pack. People are probably already pre-packing because they anticipate being moved. So what I'm telling you, Nick fans, is any type of performances and whether or not we sputter into All-Star Weekend, all of that should be expected because players are human and they don't know if they're in New York today and they're going to be in Utah tomorrow. If they're in New York today or they're going to be in, in Atlanta tomorrow. If they're in New York today or they're going to be in Cleveland tomorrow. They have no idea. And you know that that, impacts, uh, that, that can impact their work. Okay? So, big game tonight. Let's get this win. Shout out to the San Francisco 49ers. Let's get this win. I'm sure keep this in mind. Same thing applies to life that applies to our team. If there is no struggle, there is no progress. But also remember this, whether it's in the real world or in these YouTube streets, here at Nick's Deli, everybody eats. I'm sure your host, and I'm out. Peace.